Okay, so welcome to this series of videos and in this series we're looking at the carboxylic acids derivatives pack. So this is going to cover the carboxylic acids, it's also going to cover the acyl or acid chlorides and the esters. And in this video we're just going to be looking at the carboxylic acid functional group, naming and drawing them, and we're also going to be looking at the physical properties of the carboxylic acids. So this covers the first few pages in your notes. Okay, so we're looking at page two of your notes, and this is the functional group for a carboxylic acid. It's a COOH group, and it's often written COOH. It has this carbon double bonded oxygen. It also has this OH group, and it is a carboxylic acid, and the reason it's an acid is this hydrogen here can come off as an iron so it produces hydrogen positive ions and that's what makes something an acid we call it a proton donor okay so it reacts quite quickly with bases to make the salts and this is the salt version and we put o8 on the end of it to show that it's the salt so this would be coo negative n a positive. Again, we show that because there is actually an ionic bond between this oxygen and this uh, sodium, not a covalent bond. So there's an ionic interaction here, there's covalent interactions for the rest of the molecule. Okay, so we're just going to look at some structural displayed skeletal formulas um, for some of these carboxylic acids. So I'm not going to do all of them, um, but I am going to talk you through some of the ones that can cause some issues. So, um, methanoic acid, nice and straightforward. So you've got C and then you've got O, O, H, 1H there. Displayed formula, C, double bond O, O, H, and your H there, because your carbon has four bonds. Skeletal, you've simply got the double bond oxygen and the O, H. You can write that as O, H. Okay, remember with skeletal, we don't show carbon atoms, we don't show carbon hydrogen bonds or, or the hydrogen atoms, but we do show everything else. So again, propanoic acid, structural formula would be CH3, CH2, COOH, that's my structural formula. Displayed formula, well, I've got my three carbons because it's prop and... Again, I've got my double bond oxygen and my OH. Skeletal, I've got one, two, three. So I've got one, two, three carbons. That's one, two, three there. Then I've got my double bond oxygen and my OH group there. Okay. Now the tricky ones to watch out for are ones like this, three methyl hexanoic acid. So I'm not going to draw the structural formula, but I am going to look at the displayed formula. So hex means I've got six. It's a little bit difficult to switch, put this on, but I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got my double bond oxygen and my OH. Now the important thing comes, where do I put this methyl group? Well, the trick and the thing you've got to remember is that wherever this carboxylic acid functional group is, and it's always going to be on the end because we've used up three of carbon's uh, four bonds, is always carbon number one. So that is carbon number one. And if that is carbon number one, two, three, four, that makes that carbon number four. So that gets the methyl group. Okay, you have to count from the functional group. So that's carbon number one, two, three, four. So the methyl group goes on there. And then you're just going to fill up the rest of it with hydrogens to complete the displayed formula. Okay, so this is just the answer copy for that first page. And um, you've got your name of your sodium salt. So it'd be methanoate, propanoate, four methyl hexanoate, 2-methyl propanoate. So basically we take the name of the acid, in this case 2-methyl propanoic acid. Um, because we've lost the hydrogen off of the end of it, it's no longer an acid, it's a salt. So we take the first part of the name, 2-methyl propan, 2-methyl propan, and then we change the oic acid 
to O8. So we go from oic acid, and we lose that hydrogen ion. When we react it with a base, we go to an O8 to show it's now reacted and it's now a salt. Okay, so looking at page three of your notes, there are just some more ones for you to practice. Um, you've got some dioic acids, so they're with two functional groups on them. You've got an enoic acid, so you've got a double bond in there, which is going to give me restricted rotation. You've got the Z version, so the dioic parts, the um, acid parts are on the same side there. So that's what that one looks like. Okay, um, this is one you possibly haven't come across, but you're going to need to, to learn quite a lot about. And this is benzoic acid. It's got this benzene ring. Now, even in the displayed formula, we'll quite often draw a benzene ring, even in a displayed formula like that. Uh, and then because it's benzoic acid, it's got a C double bond O bond OH on it. And it looks a lot like the skeletal formula. Um, but we quite often draw benzene rings, whether they're displayed or skeletal, um, like this. But this is a C6H5. So uh, benzene, very important organic uh, compound, and you're going to study that in a separate topic. But just to be aware that this is benzoic acid. OK, so we're going to look at the physical properties of our carboxylic acids. And one of their first physical properties is that the short chained versions of them are all very soluble in water. And the reason for this is the fact that they can undergo extensive hydrogen bonding. So if we look at a carboxylic acid functional group, I have my O and I have my H. That then can form a nice hydrogen bond with the lone pair of the oxygen of one molecule, and one of those hydrogens can go off and form a hydrogen bond with the OH of another molecule, and this one could actually go off and form a hydrogen bond with the double bonded oxygen of um, a different alcohol and so on and so on. So we get lots and lots of hydrogen bonds being formed all over the place between these delta positive hydrogens, these are all delta positive, and the very delta negative oxygens, lone pairs. Okay, so you've got all these hydrogen bonds going on and this is why it's um, very soluble in water and has a higher boiling point than you'd expect just from the London forces. So they're soluble in water, why? Because they form hydrogen bonds which is the strongest of the intermolecular forces so they form hydrogen bonds with water and that basically compensates for overcoming the hydrogen bonds and London forces, both between the molecules and between, so between the carboxylic acid molecules and between the water molecules. So they can fit quite nicely in between uh, the water molecules and they can form this quite extensive range of hydrogen bonds. However, as we increase this chain length, as this R group gets longer, they get less and less soluble. So as the non-polar R group increases, basically this energetics doesn't start to work. So as this R group gets longer, the energetics don't work as well. Increases overcoming the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules, molecules, moles, is not compensated for by forming the new hydrogen bonds. 
if we get something like benzoic acid is only sparingly soluble in water and the reason for that is you've got a benzene ring and the benzene ring is very non-polar it's very hydrophobic in other words it runs away from water so benzoic acid has really strong London forces because it's got a lot of electrons in it but it's got very, very, um, it can't do hydrogen bonding, obviously. So it's a very non-polar, it's very hydrophobic. So it's very insoluble in water. Okay, so we're looking at putting the following in the order of their boiling points with the lowest boiling point first. So we've got butanoic acid, butane and butan 1 -ol. Well, the lowest of these is going to be butane. Then we're going to get butan 1 -ol. And then last but not least, we're going to get butanoic acid, which has the highest boiling point of the three. Okay, and we need to understand why that is. So the one thing they have in common is they all have London forces, but we know that London forces are one of the weakest intermolecular forces. So butane only has London forces, which I remind you are quite weak weak, therefore require least amount of energy, energy to overcome. So that's the lowest because it's got the weakest forces, London forces, it only has London forces. Um, butan 1 ol and butan 2 ol both form hydrogen bonds. So butan 1 ol and butanoic acid both have hydrogen bonds as well as London forces. Because so everything has London forces. Okay, so they both have hydrogen bonds, um, but this hydrogen bonding in the butanoic acid is much more extensive. So, but butanoic acid has more extensive hydrogen bonds, oopsie, hydrogen bonds, which are strongest type of intermolecular force therefore require more energy to overcome last but not least um so that's if you like point one point two point three um butanoic acid also has stronger London forces or compared, compared to butan 1 ol as it has more electrons. So not only does it have a better uh, range of hydrogen bonds, it also actually has stronger London forces as well on top of that. So it really has um, a much higher a boiling point. So that explains uh, the difference in their boiling points and that's a classic kind of four or even six mark question in the exam. Okay so that finishes this little video just looking at the first few pages of the carboxylic acid notes. So we've looked at the functional group, we've looked at naming and drawing carboxylic acids and we've looked at their physical properties. In the next video, we're going to be going on to look at the preparation of carboxylic acids and start to look at some of their reactions. But until then, take care, stay safe. Bye-bye.